Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And today, uh, seeing as how we're coming up on the release of Ed in Street Fighter VI, I believe he's coming out like around like February 28th or so, um, I figure now would be the best time to finally give not only my thoughts about Street Fighter VI as a whole, but also to kind of address a bit of i don't want to say like a criticism but i th i think a potential issue with street fighter 6 that might arise especially as we continue not only with street fighter 6 but also street fighter as a franchise um but first and foremost i absolutely love this game i just want to set the record straight with that i think i have like 70 hours in this game which um you know, I haven't really hit that much time with the game in a very, in a while. I, I think the last one was probably like Dragon Ball Fighters, but that was only because I had uh, friends that played it. But um, no, Street Fighter Six has been doing a lot for me. It's kind of reignited a bit of a passion um, for fighting games that I, I can't say I necessarily lost, but I did take a bit of break away from fighting games only because... I thought, like, considering my, like, skill at them, I, I didn't think fighting games were really for me, but it took stepping away and looking at, um, oddly enough, YouTubers talking about, like, you know, fighting game history broadly to realize that I, I think I was just playing the wrong type of fighting game. So, uh, usually either due to friends or, like, what the big, th you know, what was big at the time, I, I found myself playing, you know, very explosive, like, combo-heavy games. Think, like, Dragon Ball Fighters or, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, things like that. And, um, you know, as naive as I was, I thought that that was where, like, that is what fighting games were, was those very, like, combo-heavy, you know, um, kind of... God, I apologize if I don't really have the term, like, the fighting game terminology down for it, but I guess, like... Uh, neutral explosive games right uh but it took you know youtubers like i gotta give a shout out to like theory fighter and guilewin quote or i it's either guilewin quote or guilewin quotes i think it's guilewin quote for like you know making me realize that it's you know there's more to fighting games than just that and to kind of refine what i want in a fighting game which would be kind of more of a focus on like neutral with like shorter combos so think like uh uh sam show or a per like a kind of underrated one in my opinion uh katsuki blitzkopf and now even like street fighter 6 and now granted i know in street fighter 6 you do have like you can get pretty crazy combos especially if you expend you know the drive meter or you know your super meter or what have you but for the most part it is still very much it's still, you know, very grounded, has, like, it's neutral, has, like, it's volatile elements, though, with drive rush, drive impact, what have you. But I think, I think for me, it hits, like, the right balance, especially in, uh, with introduction of, um, modern controls, which I, I will kind of go more into detail with that later. But for me, I play, uh, modern Zangief and, you know, with that, I feel like Zangief is like that, hits that right niche for me in terms of like, uh, not only so much like a grappler, but I feel like a character that isn't like necessarily reliant on like long combo strings, but rather like the archetype is, I, I think, like a one shot character. I know Street Fighter doesn't ne necessarily have like a one shot character. I heard like, um, I think five had one. I think it was Oro. Some people describe Oro as like a one shot character, but um, not and like um, but yeah. So with the introduction of like you know modern controls with Zinkief, it it finally gave me a chance to play a character that was I was always interested in, but I never wanted to do full circle commands only because I, I always found them so difficult. So uh, I, I'm glad that Street Fighter Six gave me the opportunity to play as a character that I've always wanted to play, and I've just been having an absolute blast. The game looks amazing. I haven't really tried the single-player content, but I've heard good things about it. Um, 
And yeah, I've just been loving this game. Um, I mean, granted, not to say that there hasn't been issues with it. I don't want to like iterate too much on like thing like problems that other people have like talked about or discussed in length. I'll just try and briefly summarize here. So, uh, yeah, the whole DLC situation with uh, character costumes is kind of unfortunate. The fact that it's um, you have to buy like. You, there's like an in-game currency and you have to buy enough like like in order to buy one costume you basically they sell you like a currency bundle but that gives you enough for like two costumes so right now i, I bought like zangief's um like third costume and i have enough for um another character's costume but since i don't really play anybody else at the moment outside of experimenting with marissa but i don't know if uh I'm going to stick with her. I think she she feels too stubby, but... Yeah, since I don't really have another character at the moment, I'm just sitting on, you know, the coins. Maybe I'll use it for Zangief's fourth costume, whenever they do the fourth costumes, but it is unfortunate, I think, that they, um, you know, went with this route in how they approached uh, pricing the costumes, I think, is lame. Um, I also, like a lot of other people, I don't like their whole season pass DLC thing, uh, especially since that just seems to be a focus on, like, your battle hub character, which I don't really use that. I mean, sometimes I visit the battle hub um, to, you know, just mess around in there or to, like, vote in there, like, their in like some seasonal events but you know it's not something i really engage with especially since i don't do single player stuff and but the single i mean i i guess it's good that the season pass is only focused on like your avatar character because i think people would be a lot more upset if like a character costume was locked behind a season pass that you had to buy and like you know not only buy but earn the reward tiers up to um but, like, there just has not been any interest in it. Like, I rarely see people buy, like, the newest Avatar costumes. Again, granted, it could be because I don't spend a lot of time at Battle Hub, but that's just my general uh, perception of the matter. I think um, it's just kind of a... I, I think it's honestly a cost link. I don't know why they're devoting so much to it. I feel like it, it would be better spent kind of focusing on the character costume, which is what people want. There's been a lot of disappointment with... Um, a lot of their crossovers too, it, kind of in the same vein. Um, when the game was first launching, I had some issues with uh, connectivity, but that that like kind of went away uh, with patches. I, I remember uh, in the first few months trying to get matches, I would have situations where uh, like it would disconnect me from their online service, but. Um, it would also just completely disconnect my computer's internet. So I basically had to like restart everything. And so that was kind of a bummer, but for the most part, I think they've uh, fixed it now. I've granted get occasional disconnects, but you know, that's like with any online fighting game and it's so rare in street fighter nowadays. Um, but to get onto kind of, I guess the main topic of this video as you could, yeah, or this episode, you know, also available as a video format. Um, but the main topic of this episode is uh, with modern controls. Now, at, at, again, as I said, I'm a modern Zangief player, and I love how it's given me the opportunity to play a character that otherwise I wouldn't be able to really approach. Or, I mean, maybe I could approach it, but it would take, like, a lot more... I, I don't want to say, like, a lot more effort, but, you know, it would be, I, I think, a lot more exhausting for me to try and approach it because i just don't like full circle commands um it's just um i don't know i i feel like i like you know pulling it off especially since i'm a pad player is a lot more difficult uh but no i i like modern controls but i think kind of um an issue that i've had with it is kind of how they're uh how people approach well from both like players and designers how they approach what it's supposed to be so in some regards i've heard both developers and players 
describe modern controls as like a legit alternative way to play the game, right? That it's encouraged, especially for pad players, because it makes, you know, again, some characters that do like full circle or like other types of like wonky motions, like drag a punch, it, it makes it a lot easier to uh, pilot those type of characters. Um, and, but on the other hand, again, I've heard from both developers and players that, oh no, it's supposed to be more of a stopgap. That like, yeah, you're supposed to start with modern controls, but the ideal, the ideal is to eventually like graduate into classic controls. And with the way that it's currently designed in the game, it feels like it's in this weird limbo of both of them. And what I mean by that is you have certain characters like Zangief and Lily that are amazing with modern controls. Like playing modern Zangief and modern Lily like in a lot of ways changes how you approach these characters and in very interesting and cool ways. Um... But on the other hand, you have characters like JP, who is just completely neutered in um, modern controls, like to the point where they are pretty much unplayable. I, I've seen statistics that supposedly there are some modern JP players in the game, but I've never come across it, and I don't know. I, I don't even know how. I, I tried experimenting in practice mode, and it's just you miss so much of your specific spacing tools because you know he's because of how he is as his owner that I, I just don't think um, it's really feasible. Um, and then everyone else in the roster kind of fits in the middle. Uh, obviously, you know, like more notable names like that have played modern Marissa, obviously have like modern Luke dominating both in ranked and in like highly competitive play. Um, but yeah, this kind of discrepancy that exists between how, how decent characters are with um, modern controls kind of also feeds into the issue because if it's supposed to be like an alternative, uh, way to play the game then should there exist this large discrepancy between like you know jp and you know like lily or zangief right where you know or should like any of the characters be um like unplayable with modern controls i mean again not that necessarily jp is completely unplayable but it's pretty rough right or you also have like charge characters that are functionally the same like charge inputs are they still kind of retain charge inputs, but you don't have to do like the, I don't know. It, it, it's very different. Um, but at, at the same, but like I, I get the design difficulties in one approach or another, because at the same time, um, I don't think that there is a way that you could design modern controls to where everyone can be like decent with it without like completely gutting characters, which I don't think, I don't think that's a good thing. Like, um, you know, even though he's very top tier and annoying to fight now, I think having characters like JP is healthy for the Street Fighter roster because, you know, more niche characters kind of fill in, uh, kind of, um, how would I say it? Like certain players' tastes. Like, for example, Zangief kind of fills, like, my taste for, you know, not necessarily having, you know, for like, you know, a heavy hitter, right? And like, you know, command grabs and what have you. Uh, and JP's in kind of a similar fashion. You know, he's uh, even, yeah, well, in classic controls, he's very difficult to, you know, he could be very much more challenging to pilot and, you know, is kind of recommended for more advanced players. At least I would recommend him more for advanced players. Um. So yeah, I, I I don't know what approach Street Fighters should do with modern controls. If it should just be like if they should try and make it more universal across like every character, or if they should just stick to the current system where some characters are just gonna have to unfortunately kind of suffer with modern controls. Um, 
it, I mean, they're probably going to stick to, you know, the latter or, you know, our current system where, like, some characters are just going to be, like, pretty decent, like, pretty good with modern controls and everyone else is either going to be okay or bad. Um, but uh, I, I think it's definitely something I want to see Capcom devs kind of approach more in the future, especially since they kind of opened Pandora's box, um, you know, with these modern controls right like i think i think it would be weird if they did um if they went on with street fighter 7 and didn't include modern controls because it brought so many people to the table especially with single player content which i think was a big draw for them and led to kind of their um their success so far in terms of i think sales numbers and things like that um but or even with like future Street Fighter Six iterations, we might see changes with like modern controls. Like we already saw them um, implementing kind of the uh, I, I, the shortcut for like drive rush, canceling it out of certain normals that they um, gave to both both classic and like modern controls. Um. So yeah, I, I guess. Uh, I, I guess I'm very curious to see how they approach it in the future. Um, but I, I guess some side things too that uh, I, I want to talk about while, while I'm here, not really like criticisms, but like smaller nitpicks um, for me. Uh, I don't like how they, I don't like how this game records like uh, win loss for uh, like casual matches. I mean, I get why it does. It's just, it bugs me personally because, you know, I play casual. I like, I don't really play ranked, um, you know, because I don't want to have to obsess over like win loss or, uh, win loss or like winning or losing, you know, I, I just, you know, play it on like, you know, if I have like 30 minutes or so, I'll grind some matches or whatever. I don't want to really obsess on like, oh, I'm, I'm at the edge of gold and I want to try and make it to platinum or something. Um, but, but with that too, and again, this isn't a criticism, this isn't a criticism. It's also kind of a mystery that I wonder if, um, anyone listening to this might help me with, but, um, does anybody actually know if casual matchmaking in street fighter six uses, utilizes a hidden MMR? Because I tried looking it up myself, and at best you can only find um, Reddit posts speculating that there might be. Um, that granted, it's not like a definitive like ranking system like you see in ranked, where you know you'll be paired up with people very like at, you know somewhat close to your rank. And I, I know like with casual, it's still very loose. But um, for context, I was playing some matches. Uh, uh, I was playing some matches with a friend, and uh, I went pretty positive in those matches, um, and positive enough to where it actually altered my win loss ratio. And uh, ever since then, it, and granted, this might just be my perception of it because I was, you know, re you know, playing the game during uh, Super Bowl Sunday, so maybe there just was it was only like the no lifers that I was fighting against in. Um, you know, uh, casual matches, but I felt like immediately I was being put up against like some top tier, like competition, like Diamond Four, Diamond Five. Which, on a side note, if you're a Diamond Four, or Diamond Five, what are you doing in casuals? Just play ranked. Like you're all, you're so close to master. Like, what are you doing? I mean, are you doing like warm up matches? I don't know. People are weird. Anyways, um, and I, I I don't think I was doing terribly, but I noticed that like I have been like <laughs> like these are a lot stronger. I feel like they are like stronger opponents than me. So I was I was just curious if it is if I am being matched up with them because of like my win loss ratio going up, or if it's just you know um convenient or not or coincidence sorry coincidence um 
I mean, I imagine there probably has to be some type of hidden MMR, right, to prevent, um, I think they call it, like, smurfing, you know? Um, which, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but it's just so weird how nobody, like, knows for sure. Or, um, I wonder why it has to even be, like, hidden, right? Like, because I can't find, like, any official information detailing how, if it does, or, you know, how it, how it works. Um, and I, to be fair, part of it is on me too. Like, I guess if I did really want people near my rank, I should play ranked or, you know, um, or if I want like kind of a more casual experience, I've heard that like doing battle hub cabinet matches are a lot better for that. Um, so I might look into that in the future. I just, I got, I really don't want to get to like ranked only because I don't want to like obsess on my rank. But I hear it's like good to, you know, um, like you just make it up to like gold or whatever because, you know, it, there's like different tiers and I don't think you really level down from each tier. Well, except for like diamond and platinum, I think you can rank down to the bottom tier. But like if you're like in the bronze through gold tier, you don't rank down. It's a rookie, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the all I really had to mention with uh, Street Fighter. I'm looking forward to Ed. I don't know. I mean, because they've done a lot to really translate Ed into, like, you know, um, because they're shifting. Because apparently in Street Fighter Five, Ed did play, like, more of like a modern controls character with not really utilizing motion controls. So it will be interesting to see him with motion controls. Um, but I, I wonder if like, again, if that translation will mean that he won't be as, if he's going to be a character that's not as viable with modern controls or if he'll, he'll probably fit somewhere in the middle to be honest. But, um, that is going to, Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing that I did want to mention while I'm here is that uh, a lot of people have been, like, kind of talking about um, the balance patch that's going to come out, like, it's still going to be a while because I think it's going to come out, like, post, uh, around the same time as Akuma is coming out or post Akuma. Um, and a lot of people are kind of, I, I guess, complaining that... Uh, you know, when you compare it to, like, the other fighting games in the market, like, a lot of them have had, like, balance patches come out more recently. You know, Mortal Kombat 1 and Tekken 8, I think, even had... I think Tekken 8 has had one come out. Um, Like, <laughs> this is just my bias, but, you know, I'm not... I'm not clamoring right away for a balance patch, only because I, I play Zangief, and Zangief is currently low tier i think he's like some tier list plays him like second to last or third to last or whatever usually only above lily as a character and honestly i don't think this upcoming patch is gonna necessarily make him move up that much in the tier list if he gets like well it'd be weird if he got nerfed but um i don't think it's really gonna move him up in the tier list only because I just don't think this is going to be Zangief's game. Like at best, what I like thinking what I would want as a Zangief player with my li even with my limited experience with the character, at best it would be maybe an increase to some of the damage and um, maybe fixing the hitbox on his lariat because I had some weird situations where. Uh, I feel like I would anti-air move, but they hit at like a like a sweet spot, like kind of above his head. It's it's super weird. Um, but other than that, I I just don't think with the current version of Street Fighter Six, there's much that you could give to Zangief to make him like a stronger character. Um, I mean, I I could be wrong, and maybe they're really cooking up something nice for my boy, but. I don't know. I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical of uh, the, you know, Zangief being even like mid tier, to be honest. I think, you know, 
but it's okay because Zangief is supposed to fill a very particular niche, especially as this um, old school grappler. And in comparison to Manon, who I kind of see as like appropriately a new school grappler in how, you know, um, one is more about explosive damage where the other one is more about like integrating your command grabs into your overall combo structure or whatever. Again, at least from my general perception. Um, but yeah, that is going to uh, do it for me. I hope uh, you all are doing well. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, you could do so in a number of different ways. If you want to do a monthly plan, I recommend my Patreon account. It's, there's three different tiers. Uh, some of the tiers give you different like mer exclusive merch and stuff like that. But uh, if you can only do one-time donations, I would recommend more my uh, Ko-Fi account. Uh, again, I think Ko-Fi also lets you do like the monthly subscription plan, but, uh, but Patreon would be better for that because you do get like, you only get the merch with, uh, the Patreon tiers. Um, but if you, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I lost my train. Oh, I'm sorry, but if you want to also support me and get some cool stuff. I also recommend my uh, merch store with uh, art artwork designed by uh, George Isaac of Nocturnal Essen. He's a free, you know he's a frequent collaborator on the program. He makes a lot of my he made my logo. He makes a lot of the promo art. Great artist. Um, the links to all this can be found on my Twitter X account, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm just, I'm just so used to saying Twitter, man. But yeah, all that's linked on my social media at Podcasting Pasta. Again, that's at Podcasting Pasta. All one word. P's are capitalized. Not sure. I don't think it matters. Um, I'm also on Blue Sky, but I'm not going to be as active. I just made the Blue Sky account to uh, reserve the name because uh, I, I had the issue with Twitter slash X. Um, to where somebody took uh like pasta like uh podcast pasta as their handle so that's why i'm podcasting pasta um but no again thank you all so much for uh joining me today as i kind of ramble about this topic but um yeah uh just take care and uh i hope to see hmm. I'm trying to think of what I want to if there's anything else I want to say with my outro here no I think that's it no okay so again sorry I'm, I'm sorry I'm getting distracted here thank you all so much for joining me today uh, and I will catch you all later bye